Welcome everybody to our little Bible study and today we're covering Titus chapter 2. And are you rapture ready? Um, the pre-tribulation rapture is imminent, but we're going to be talking about that because it's, it's our blessed hope and that's in this chapter. So, um, Titus chapter 2 defiled and reprobate or pure and peculiar which one are you <laughs> yes everyone in here is pure and peculiar yeah, yeah, so we're peculiar <laughs> <laughs> god is purifying the body of christ with his word that's what he's doing now for those people who want to be purified absolutely because he doesn't force us to be saved he doesn't force us to read the Bible, and He doesn't force us to serve Him. So, we're blessed. Thank you, Holy Father God. In Jesus' name we come before you, and we praise you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for your great sacrifice on Calvary, Lord Jesus. And we want your um, great love to be proclaimed mm -hmm. all over the world. and how you saved us from eternal torment. It's, we're so grateful. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Lord, that uh, many will be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay. So, Titus chapter 2, defiled and reprobate or pure and peculiar. So, how can someone be defiled or reprobate? It's someone who doesn't understand what God's doing now. Who doesn't understand when the body of Christ actually began. It's very important to get that right because otherwise we can get so many things wrong. And God is purifying the body of Christ. So if you're saved today, you're part of the body of Christ by His Word. So... Um, he uses the, his word in, in English is found in the King James Bible. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Titus 2.14 2, uh, So he has redeemed us from all iniquity. Not only, you know, the fact that he saved sinners, but He has also redeemed us from doing iniquity during our lifetime. With His Spirit in us, we can live a godly life, because that's what grace teaches us. And so we're going to be looking at that, and we're going to also be comparing and contrasting our rapture with Christ's second coming. Israel is God's peculiar people, and so is the body of Christ. So we'll be making that clear as we go on. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. Deuteronomy 14.2 so, in this verse, we can see that Israel is a peculiar people above all the other nations in the, in the earth. So, um, they, Israel was above the Gentiles. And we're, we're going to look at that some more. So, it's very important to understand that Christ has two ministries. One for his earthly believers, that's Peter's group and one for his heavenly believers, that's Paul's group. So, let's go on. Let's look at this one. So, rapture ready? How many people are rapture ready? <laughs> <laughs> We're all rapture ready. And I, I'm joined today with Cheryl, Patty, and Nancy, and Zandra is not here today because she had to work. Um, so, why does the world seem ignorant of the imminent rapture, our blessed hope, which will soon take place. 
It seems like everyone's going about their business mm -hmm. and not thinking. Very few of us are thinking about, you know, this great um, resurrection power that will soon be taking place. And so, if, if the body of Christ is resurrected, what, what will it be blamed on? Well, you know, those people who don't understand the Bible might blame it on the aliens. We don't know. We don't know. When all these people are gone. So the pre-tribulation rapture is imminent. But Satan has weakened the nations. <laughs> I, I lost this little piece. He's weakened the nations and the church. And because he's confused the body of Christ, he's confused the church of what, you know, the Bible really says. Because many people are not applying the one rule to Bible study, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, are you going up or are you staying down? Uh. So, going up is the easy way. Staying down is the hard way, because that means that you'll have to go through the tribulation. Mm. Here it says that our uh, pre-tribulation rapture is, our rapture is pre-tribulation. And to wait for his son from heaven, so we're waiting for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, so we're waiting for Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead, he resurrected three days after he was buried, which delivered us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 So the wrath to come is the same thing as the tribulation. So we're being delivered from having to go through that. We don't want anyone to be left behind at the rapture. So what is... Um, the, the another way of saying the wrath or the seven years of tribulation or Daniel's seventieth week, all of these things are the Lord's day. All of those things are the same. It's also called Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah thirty verse seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. So Jacob is another name for Israel. He was, they were first called Jacob. It's a trouble that, that has, is coming on them because of Leviticus 26, the seven, uh, five courses of chastisement. It has nothing to do with the body of Christ. So we're not going to be part of that. But Israel's program is now suspended, but it's only a temporary suspension because after our rapture God will continue uh, with Israel so this is a very important verse for this Bible study so I want you to look at it very closely Paul says for I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office Romans eleven thirteen. so who's he speaking to Gentiles. Gentiles, that's right. We're going to be looking, I, I don't know if you remember last week, I said that as we look at what belongs to Israel and Christ's earthly people and compare it to, you know, in prophecy and compare it to us in mystery, it helps us to see our program in mystery much clearer. That's why we're comparing and contrasting the second coming today with with the rapture. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. So after, in Colossians 3, 4, after Christ comes, you know, we're going to appear with him in glory after the rapture. So another uh, way of saying the rapture is our gathering together. This is in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Our gathering together unto him. And then the rapture is also mentioned in Philippians. Listen carefully. For our conversation is in heaven.
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. So, you know, we're not going to go up in these flesh and blood fallen bodies. We're going up in our glorified bodies that we're, it's going to be like his glorified body. And we're waiting for that. And then he's going to use the body of Christ to help him subdue all things unto himself. All things in the heavenly places. So he, God is mighty. And he has mighty resurrection power. And so we're waiting for that to take place now. Because another way, he says, And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.6 So God already sees us as if we're up in heaven. God is a giver. He gave us his life on the cross so he can give... No, he gave his life on the cross so he can give his life to believers of both groups. Okay? But we, we want to make it clear that the body of Christ did not be, begin at the cross but by the cross. And we're going to be looking at that also. Okay, so we're going to be looking at Titus chapter 2, where Titus is talking to the old men and the, the old women who will, and, and te, te, who will be teaching the younger women and the younger men and he's talking to the whole congregation um, and, and teaching them sound doctrine. So he's going to be, you know, contrasting what he's telling Titus to do in contrast to what the circumcision that then honor Paul's apostleship were doing in chapter 1. So he's going to be talking to the whole congregation but then he's going to have the older women especially help the younger women because it's better for for the the women the older women to help them and to encourage them to love their husband and to love their children than um, the the men. Um, fruit comes from life. Christ's life in us uses His Word to us to produce fruit for his glory. So, it's, remember, there's no good thing in us. Any good thing in us is Christ and his life. And so, we're, we're grateful. That's what we needed. Because, let's take another look over here at um, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had close to idyllic uh, conditions. But did they still, you know, were they still susceptible to Satan's lies as a certain ca serpent came mm -hmm. and convinced them that they, you know, could be as gods? Yes. You know, and so even in idyllic conditions with, you know, having the spirit <clears throat> in them, they sinned. So what do they need? They need the spirit of the Son of God who never sinned, mm -hmm. who loved God and wanted to listen to God and to serve God the right way. And, you know, that's what they need. They need the spirit of the Son of God. And they're falling there in that, during idyllic conditions in Eden. Prove that. Mm. They needed to have the, the one who loved the Father, and was loyal to the Father, and delighted to serve the Father. They needed His Spirit in them. Okay? So, um, we're going to be talking today about Basra? What does Basra have to do with anything? And where is Basra? Somewhere up there. 
<laughs> okay. All right. So here we have Crete. Titus is on Crete. Okay. Basra is over here, south of the Dead Sea, in in um, um Saudi Arabia. No, he's in he's in um, Edom. 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 Oh, Edom. Edom. Okay. Edom is very much like Adam. Mm -hmm. It means red. It's where Esau's people were. It's the capital of Edom, is Basra. Okay, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Basra. Because um, that's where the Lord's going to go. Now, look over here. What's going on in this picture? What's going on in this picture here? This is Christ's second coming to Israel. Okay? And he's coming with dyed garments. But before we get to that, let me tell you about when I was a tourist in Greece, I, um, quite a while ago, before I was saved, I, I stomped on grapes in a big vat. <laughs> and then we, and we scooped up the stomped on grapes with the juice and it didn't look very appetizing after you know our bare feet had been crushing those grapes okay it didn't look like some wine that we wanted to drink or grape juice so um, let me just put this aside and keep that in your mind okay stomping on grapes to make them into grape juice to ferment it to make it into wine can take another sip of water. Okay, so back to our picture here. So, at his second coming, the Lord Jesus Christ will, his garments will be stained red, mm. having trampled the wine press, the wine fat. But he's not trampling grapes. He's trampling people in his wrath, in his fury. And so he's, he's coming, you know, having, you know, done vengeance to his enemies, the unbelieving Jews and the unbelieving Gentiles. And the sign of his coming will be like so obvious because it will be very dark. The sun will not give her light. The moon will not give his light. It will be very dark. And as lightning can be seen from all over in the dark night, so will the sign of the Son of Man at his second coming. It will be a very bright light in a darkness that can be felt on the earth. Just like the darkness in Egypt. Is there a verse to go with that? Yeah, we're going to be looking at that. Now he comes with the cloud of heaven. And see here, mm -hmm. the, he comes with a host of angels. And they're so numerous that it seems also like a cloud. Okay? And who's waiting for him? These are the believers, the Jewish believers, the little flock, the little remnant that believed that the name of their Messiah was Jesus of Nazareth. They are the ones that he's coming to redeem. And so they're happy. They're happy to see him. Because now Israel, the believing Israel, the ones that made it through the tribulation, will get their glorified bodies at his second coming. And he will also resurrect the ones that believed him you know, since Adam in, in, in prophecy. So that's his second coming. And um, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Very fascinating. So what was our problem? Wherefore, by one man, Adam, who disobeyed God, sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. So... Everyone inherited, when he says men, he means men and women, mankind. Sin passed upon all mankind, for, the, for that all have sinned. 
So all mankind inherited the sin nature, and all mankind also sinned on their own. So um, what do we need then if we're sinners? You know, can we save ourselves? Can mm -hmm. a sinner ever be good? Can a sinner ever come before the Holy Father? No. no. They can never save themselves, but they're helpless. And in our song today, you know, we're going to hear those words. So, what is the greatest act of love? It's what the Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary. Okay? His death for our sins, his burial in the tomb, and his resurrection three days later. That, he came under very difficult circumstances to do that for us. Um, and he essentially said, Father, place his or her blame on me and let them have my righteousness. Because Paul explained that God solved the sin problem by letting us have Christ's righteousness, his life, his spirit, when we believe. So what's the gospel? What's the gospel that we need to believe in order to be saved? I declare the gospel by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins. So Christ died for our sins in mystery also. According to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, and the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So if we want to tell anyone where the verses are in the Bible that saves a soul today, it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Eternity is a long time to be wrong, right? <laughs> Let's be saved now. So, um, yeah, okay, let me just go with the order I have. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he hath said, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation. Have I succored thee or helped you? Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Be saved now. Don't go through the tribulation. Okay? Because it's going to be very hard to be saved then. So Paul said to um, the Ephesian. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So he is preaching the gospel of the grace of God. And he's going to finish his course. Are we going to finish our course? How many people want to finish their course? Okay, everybody wants to finish their course with joy and the ministry that we have received from the Lord. Okay, so we want to do that because life is short. Okay. We often hear life is short. I better enjoy it. How about eternity is long? I better prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so it's a different way of looking. Yeah. So, we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' <clears throat> sake. We are all to be ambassadors for Christ. So, we're not, I'm not a pastor, I'm an ambassador for Christ, just like my friends. So, what is the God factor? What is the God factor? Okay, here it is. Ready? Mm -hmm. Christ in you, uh -huh. the hope of glory. When we have his spirit, his life, his righteousness, that's the God factor. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that makes every, all the difference. Because mm -hmm. when we have that, we can now go before the Holy Father and not be obliterated. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because we're, we're, we're righteous. And we believe it. And we believe it. So, rightly dividing, are you rightly dividing? Yes. Why is it so important to know when the body of Christ began? 
study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All of the Bible is God's truth, but we have to divide out the 13 letters that all begin with Paul, that's to the body of Christ in mystery from the rest of the Bible before and after. So that's how we rightly divide truth from truth. The truth for our instruction for the heavenly places from Christ's instruction in the earthly, to his earthly people. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. This is 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 2.16. So we don't want to have ungodliness, right? We want to be godly. And if we follow our instructions, we will be. So the problem with a lot of churches today is that they are using the blender method. <laughs> so they put in some instructions to his earthly people and some instructions to his heavenly people, and they don't divide between the two, and they mix it all together, you know, flip the switch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not what we want to do. We want to keep things separate. Okay. So, um... Let's see. It's important to know that God changed the program nearly 2,000 years ago. And people are still trying to live under the old program. So people are still trying to live under Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when they're supposed to be living under Paul's instructions to the body of Christ. And in this chapter, he's going to give instructions to older and younger men older and younger women, and servants. The kingdom on earth has not been offered since the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. That was talked about in Galatians 1, 6 through 9, and Galatians 2, 7 through 9 also. Okay? So he's not offering the kingdom on earth right now. He's offering a chance for people to live in the heavenly places. Okay. So, can I take, if I want to fix my Cuisinart coffee maker, should I use the instructions that my husband has for his sander? No. No. Right? <laughs> we cannot mix these instructions in a blender. Okay? We have to keep instructions separate. So, why are the instructions to those who will live on earth so much more numerous than those who will live in heaven. Because God expects us to learn from what he said to them also. Because all of the Bible is for us, but not all of the Bible is to or about us. But we can learn from what he said to, the, to Israel. So we're going to find out that the body of Christ is made is an opportunity for Jews and Gentiles to be saved into the group that will live in heaven. So when a, here we have a Jew and a Gentile, and at the rapture they will be going up to heaven. Okay? So, um, let's sing our song. Are you ready, girls? Amazing love, right? No. Okay. And, and can it be? And can it be? Okay. Sometimes it's called Amazing Love, though. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, Patty, I'll take that other song. Oh, this okay. one. Yeah, I have the wrong song book. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> and can it be that I should gain? An interest in the Savior's blood. Die he for me who caused his pain. For me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst 
died for me. He left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite is his grace. Emptied himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all immense and free, for oh, oh my God, it found out me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray, I woke the dungeon flame with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free, and rose went forth and followed thee. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head, and clothed with righteousness divine, bold I approach Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Okay, thank you, girls. <clears throat> All right, let's, um, beautiful. let's have, um, let's have Christ's earthly ministry. Christ's earthly ministry. <clears throat> okay. For three years. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This is something Christ did in his earthly ministry. This is not something he's doing right now. That's Matthew 10, 1. Now, in ten, and then he, it lists the 12 apostles for Israel. Mm -hmm. Then he says, These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Sam Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So are they sent to the Gentiles? No. Are they sent to the Samaritans? No. no. The half-breeds. Half-breeds. Mm. No. The half-breed Jews. No. They're sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And later on in this chapter, Matthew 10, that was 10, 5, and 6, in, 10, 5, um, in Matthew, he said, in 1524, the Lord says, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So did he come to save his people Israel from their sins or the body of Christ? Israel. Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we're going to be looking more at Matthew later. So let's look now at that one year extension of mercy that we talked about last time. Okay. 
So this is the one year between Acts chapter 2 and 7. You know, before uh, it, it ends with the stoning of Stephen. And that's when the nation of Israel fell. Okay? So this was a one year extension of mercy to accept Jesus as the Messiah. So this was a prophesied event when they were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came down on those 120. And Peter stood up with the, with the 12 apostles and explained what had happened. This was something that Joel had prophesied. So then later on in Acts, it talks about in Acts 6-2, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, disciples means students, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So in uh, Acts 6-2, so they're also writing little flock scriptures during that one year. Because they know that Messiah is being rejected. So they're writing things like first and second Peter is happening. Well, I don't know exactly when Second Peter was. But he said in Second Peter, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. So how can we have them in remembrance? Or how can they have it. If it's written down, mm -hmm. then they can, you know, see what was, was said. Okay? So Peter's going to write some more, you know, scripture. And what did Peter say? Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1.13. So, remember the book of Revelation? When Jesus Christ is revealed at his second coming, then they're going to have grace because they're going to get their glorified body. What was the other scripture? The other scripture was 2 Peter 1.15. Okay. Okay. You see that? So, th this was not something for the body of Christ. The body of Christ did not begin in Acts chapter 2. Now, the body of Christ began in Acts chapter 9 with the salvation of Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Okay, so here's Saul of Tarsus, also called Paul, and the risen, ascended, resurrected no, no. The resurrected, ascended, glorified Lord Jesus is appearing to him. Okay? On the road to Damascus, and make, you know, there's a big, great light. And Paul writes about it. Because in Acts 9, that's Luke explaining um, Paul's conversion. In Acts 22, it's Paul giving his testimony before the Jews of his conversion. In Acts 26, it's Paul giving his testimony before the Gentiles of his conversion, a Gentile king, Agrippa. So here in, in Acts 22, 9, he said, And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. So why is that important? Because the rapture is going to be a secret event. Not everyone is going to hear, come up here, body of Christ, or whatever he will say. Okay? So, um, that, that shows us that. So, here we have, um, in Titus, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Who, had, who said that Christ came to save all people during the dispensation of grace. That was Paul. So, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men in Acts 9. That's when it was to all men, not just Israel. That's Titus 2.11. So, that appearing of Jesus Christ to Paul. 
okay, on that rope. And later in a couple of verses, he'll say, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's calling Jesus Christ our great God and our Savior. And see, it's here. You see that? Mm -hmm. There he is. So the mystery is between these two appearings. The appearing to Paul in Acts 9 and the appearing to rapture the body of Christ, our blessed hope. So the mystery is between those two appearings. Um, let me see. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So you can see, the, you know, when in Acts 9, when Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus, then he opened up a new dispensation that's been going on for ne nearly 2,000 years in this yellow part. And it will end with the rapture, another appearing of Jesus Christ. And then we'll go to judgment seat of Christ. And then will come the, the postponed seven-year tribulation. Mm -hmm. And then God will set up his kingdom. Well, then after seven years of tribulation, he, he will have his second coming. We're going to be talking about that. Okay. That, that verse, the bottom one. Yeah, Titus 2. 2.13. Yeah, so there's one apostle to the one body of Christ. Okay, so it's been Paul for nearly 2,000 years, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's very important to guess. Okay, so what is the biggest blunder of the church? It's saying that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9. So, um, Israel is to be priests, and we're to be ambassadors. Do we follow earthly or heavenly instructions? Heavenly, heavenly instructions. Yeah, and that's how to avoid spiritual darkness. Okay, so, um, it's important that after the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, Galatians 2, the only valid gospel was Paul's. And what's the gospel that saves? 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 15, 15, 1 through 4. The rapture and the judgment seat of Christ are exclusively found in Apostle Paul's letters. They were unprophesied mystery. Okay, so um, the son's death and resurrection allows the father to impute his righteousness to two groups and to resurrect them. Okay, Peter's group and Paul's group. On Calvary, Jesus saved two groups to give them his spirit and is able to restore the two realms, heaven and earth. So, um, let's take a look at this. Salvation for Peter is to live in the kingdom on earth. Salvation for Paul is to live in heaven. So, before the rapture, we follow Paul. After the rapture, it's right to follow Peter. There's two messengers, Paul and Peter, two gospels, the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God, two audiences, the earthly people and the heavenly people, but one Lord and one cross. Law and grace don't mix. So we can't mix those instructions to those different because... He said one thing to Israel and another thing to the body of Christ. We can't claim that Israel's information is all about, about us and to us. But it's for our learning. So unless we understand that Christ has two ministries, one through Peter and one through Paul, we're never going to understand the Bible. Okay. Um, what is the most... Okay. Why is it so important, then, to be mid-Acts Pauline dispensational in our Bible study? Because that's the body of Christ. Yeah, that's an instruction to us. Um, if we don't rightly divide, we won't know what good works we should do. And if we don't, if we don't rightly divide, and we won't know, you know, which gospel saves today. We won't know, you know, how to serve God. And, you know, there's so many things that we won't know unless we write the Bible. 
So here is a picture that's very interesting. See this right here? Mm -hmm. This is the temple, um, Solomon's temple in the past. And here is the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. So at Christ's second coming, he's going to stand on that Mount of Olives. He's not going to, you know, he's going to come all the way down to the earth. Okay? So it has a bunch of olive trees on it. It's more built up now. Um, so what's the most valuable thing on earth? The Bible. That's right. It's the Bible. And in Psalm um, 12 and uh, 6 through 7, the word of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So God has promised to preserve his word. Um, okay. So, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So who's performing the good work? Christ in us, right? We have his life. And then we are rewarded for the work Christ does in and through us. So, um, yeah. Let's go here. It says in Ephesians, remember I said that God is purifying the body of Christ. It says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So salvation um, is by grace, through faith. When we, when we believe, we are saved. Not of yourselves, it's not something that we earn. It's a gift. What was the gift? His spirit in us, right? His righteousness? Yeah. yeah, and and all the work that it took to make that possible. Not of works that we do, lest any man should boast. So none of us can boast, because Jesus Christ did all the work. And then he give the Father, you know, gives us his spirit. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. So, God is working in us. We're His workmanship. And God has some works that He wants us to do. Some good works. And we've got to figure out what they are. Because we're going to do good work here, in this life, and in eternity. Okay, so here's a way that God purifies the church. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. That he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So Christ is using his word to purify the church. Because if we understand what God says to us, we'll have the mind of Christ. That he might present it, the church, to himself, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. So he wants to purify us with his word, the washing of his word. Okay, so here is the congregation that um, Titus is helping. So the son is sitting at the right hand of the father and the church belongs to him. And Paul is his apostle. And then there's a bishop or pastor that's a man. And the deacons are also men. And they are the leaders in the church. And then the congregation is everybody else. So these people all have the Spirit of God in them, including Paul. And so do the congregation. And so the pastor and deacons feed or help us to understand our instructions so we can then go out in the community and be ambassadors for Christ. Okay, and we're going to see today that God's kingdom is made up of two realms. Um, 
earth and heaven. It's, it's a duplex. Okay? And all of these people have the Spirit of God in them. That Christ is in them. And um, so remember that duplex. Because we're going to be looking at that in a little bit. When we look at Ephesians 2. Okay, but let's start with our chapter. Titus chapter 2. Looking for our imminent rapture, our blessed hope. 1 through 10, believers are to adorn the doctrine. 11 and 12, what grace teaches. 13, looking for that blessed hope. 14, our Savior gave himself to purify unto himself a peculiar people. 15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, because he has the authority from Christ, because Paul is writing the, Christ's words by inspiration. So there's only 15 verses. Mm -hmm. What was Titus to do in verse 1? What are old and young people and servants to do in 2 through 10? What does sober-minded mean in 2, 6? Where and how do we study the Bible to 10? When did the grace of God appear to 11? And it was when? Was it Acts 2 yeah. or Acts 9? Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts 9. Okay. <laughs> what does the grace of God teach us? 2.12. How does Christ live through us? 2.12. How is our blessed hope? No. What is our blessed hope? 2.13. And I'm going to let the <laughs> cat out of the bag. Our blessed hope is to be alive when the rapture comes. You know, that would be wonderful. But even if we die, we're still, if we're believers, going up. When did Paul know about the rapture? 2.13. How does Christ's second coming to Israel differ from the rapture? 2.13. Okay, let me just tell you that Paul knew about the rapture early on because he wrote about it in one of his earliest letters to the Thessalonians in... Um, Acts 18. Who are the peculiar people that Christ gave himself for in 2.14? That's the church, the body of Christ. How does Christ purify his peculiar people with his word? word. 2.14. And how do we do good works? How that 2.14. How does Matthew 24 compare with the rapture? What did Jesus mean by this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled in Luke 21, 32? Are the Gentiles or the body of Christ, the wild olive tree, grafted in? Okay. And then you also have what about Basra? Oh yeah, what about Basra? Why does it matter? Okay. Thank you, uh, Nancy. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to miss that. Because yeah. that's going to be so fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, here we have the timeline. So, um, in Deuteronomy 7, 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God... The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So, peculiar means special. Above all people. So, the Israel, the people of Israel, is supposed to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay? And that's true. We see Israel here on top and the Gentiles on the bottom. Gentiles are all nations. The same thing over here. Israel is on top, and the Gentiles are on the bottom. But during this, but now, the Jews and Gentiles are on the same level. Because the Jews have fallen down to the same level. And we're going to be seeing that. So, this is time past, but now, ages to come. It's the same thing up here. We have time past, time past, but now, ages to come. We have prophecy, mystery, prophecy. 
We have prophecy, mystery, prophecy. So this is just in miniature. So, um, let's go over this. This follows the books in the Bible. Genesis to Revelation. So Genesis to Acts 9 is prophecy. Then Romans to Philemon is mystery. Acts is a transition book. Then Hebrews to Revelation is prophecy again for how to get through the tribulation um, and into the kingdom. So first it starts out with Adam. So after Adam sinned and the Tower of Babel came Abraham. God decided to make his own nation out of Abraham. And I want you to be able to explain, draw this and explain it to somebody. So um, then came the law through Moses. And um, then John the Baptist came on the scene after 400 years of silence and introduced the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was here for three years. And that's Matthew through John. Then, um, you know, he was crucified, he was buried, and he rose again, and he was here for 40 days. And then he ascended to the Father, and he sent down the Holy Ghost 10 days later, and gave that one more year extension of mercy. Um, but they stoned Stephen full of the Holy Ghost, and that was the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, and that's when Israel fell down. That was the nation of Israel fell, but the little flock continued, okay? So, I want to move this over a little bit. Alright, because I'm going to ask you, when did, uh, when is God going to restart the program with Israel? Will it be in Acts 7, where Israel was, you know, fell as a nation? Will it be in Acts 9, when the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace began? Or will it be in Acts 15, where Israel was, the little flock of believers of Israel was put on hold? Put on hold. That's right. In Acts 15, that's where he restarts Israel's program. Okay. Back to this. So, after Israel fell as a nation, um, because the religious leader stoned Stephen, then Christ appeared on the road to Damascus and saved Paul, and he get, made Paul his one apostle to f form the body of Christ instructions during the dispensation of grace. And then we are these little black people that are now waiting to be raptured. So our information, the mystery, is between these two appearings of Jesus Christ. The appearing to Paul and the appearing to rapture us. Then we go to a judgment seat of Christ. Question. And, yes. Now, in Acts 15, that's when Israel was put on hold, and then after the rapture, that's when Israel's program starts again. Yes, because you see these little red men here? Mm -hmm. Those are people that were saved during Christ's earthly ministry, John the Baptist, Christ, and the Twelve. And then after our rapture, there'll be more of those people added to that group. Another bunch of red people during the tribulation. So he has another harvest to, of, of uh, people into Peter's group to harvest at his second coming. So during this tribulation, then he'll, he'll come after that and set up his one-year kingdom on earth. Where Israel now will be on top and the Gentiles on the bottom. So... Here I am. Here I am right now. I'm, I'm here. I'm just waiting to be raptured. Okay? And I'm, I'm, grace is teaching me how to live my life. And we're going to be looking at that in a little bit. So, let's look at, at our, our information. So, remember the time past? Wherefore, remember that ye, Gentiles... 
being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So in time past, the Gentiles had been set aside at the Tower of Babel and had no hope. Because the covenants all belonged to Israel and didn't belong to us. But in the ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So we'll be in heaven and we'll be going, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> you know? But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2.13 So now, we're nigh. We are nigh. The Gentiles are nigh to God. Okay? We here sometimes were not nigh. Okay, let me find my Ephesians. Okay, here it is. Okay, so let's elaborate on our information. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye, this is, you know, the believers in the body of Christ, who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We've been, we're now, the Gentiles are now nigh. They have an opportunity for salvation. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So the middle wall of partition were all the laws and ordinances that made Israel above everybody else. You know, he's broken down those dietary laws, the circumcision, the, the water baptizing, all of that things have been broken down. So there's none of that... You know, Israel's not above the Gentiles. For to make of himself of twain one new man. So, right now, he's making this other group, Jew and Gentiles, in one body. And they have the Spirit. So, whenever we have received the Spirit of the Son of God, we're a new man. We're a new creature. And we're a new creature that have been placed into... A group of new creatures that are going called the body of Christ that will go up at the rapture. So making peace. He's made peace between Jews and Gentiles in this dispensation. So that's all Ephesians 2.15? This goes from 2.13 to 2.15. Oh. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. So why did... Why did God and Christ begin at the cross? Because Israel hadn't fallen. They had one more year, remember? Mm -hmm. they didn't, he didn't save Saul of Tarsus until at least a year after the cross. So it's by the cross. We're, we're reconciled into one body, one group, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. You know, getting rid of, of the animosity between Jews and Gentiles. Because, you know, we're, we're the same. We're the same spirit of Jesus Christ when we're saved in this body or, uh, or group. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off. The Gentiles were far off in the past. They had no hope. And to them that were nigh, preached peace to the Jews that were nigh before to God or near. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So now we both, Jews and Gentiles, have access by one spirit, the spirit of the Son of God, to the Father. So Jesus Christ is God and Savior. Now Paul, who is a Jew, and Titus, or, or us, who is a Gentile, we're both in this, in this body, the same group now where the Jew is not above the Gentile. 
Now therefore, ye, body of Christ, are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. What's the household of God and what saints is he talking about? The household of God is a duplex, remember? Mm -hmm. So Peter's group and Paul's group were fellow citizens in that same household of God. Okay, so Paul was constantly talking about the kingdom of God being made up of two realms. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So, the chief cornerstone is the Lord. What he did, you know, to save both groups. And the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the ch chief. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto and holy temple in the Lord. So that duplex is a holy temple. In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So God's habitation is in heaven and on earth. Okay. I know this is a lot of information for, for um, you know, people to take in. But this is a great opportunity to take it in. Yes, it is. Okay. So let's talk about the wild olive tree. The wild olive branch explained. Okay. So the thou in 1117 is going to modify... Uh, that pronoun is going to modify the antecedent noun called the Gentiles in 11.13. Remember he said, For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Is this Romans? This is Romans. Yeah, this is Romans. Um, and let me show you that more closely. Well, let me explain this first and then we'll show you that. So we're going to go over it twice so you can all get it. Okay. So here is the good olive tree, and here's the wild olive tree. So the good olive tree had some branches that fell off. Those broken off branches is the unbelieving of Israel in Acts 7. These remaining branches is Peter's group, the believing remnant okay. of Israel. And the good olive tree represents the blessings of Abraham. Galatians 3.14, where we can have the opportunity to receive the spirit of Jesus Christ. The root of Jesse is Jesus Christ, as explained in Romans 15.12. He is Abraham's thy seed in Galatians 3.16. So the good olive tree is the opportunity to have access to God by faith. So... The wild olive branch that's grafted in from that tree are Gentiles, all lost. All lost. It's not the body of Christ. During the dispensation of grace, does every single person on this planet right now have the opportunity to be saved? Yes. Okay, that's what it's all about. So during the dispensation of grace, God is dispensing grace and giving everybody an opportunity to be saved and go to heaven. This box here, those people who believe the gospel go into that, and that's the body of Christ. It's the believing Gentiles and Jews also that standeth by faith, Romans 11.20. In the gospel, Romans 3, um, 21 through 28. Because in Romans 11.22, he says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, Gentiles, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Can a member of the body of Christ ever lose his salvation? No. No. It's mm -hmm. once saved, always saved. So how are they cut off? Well, when the rapture happens, 
How many more people can be saved into the body of Christ and be going to heaven? The chance will be over, right? Okay. All right. So let's look at that as far as Scripture goes. Paul says in Romans 11, 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? He's talking about Israel. So they stumbled at the cross. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So they did fall. But when did they fall? They fell at the stoning of Stephen. Mm -hmm. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, so now the riches of the world is anyone can have an opportunity to be saved without going through Israel. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bless Israel. You can just believe directly on what the Son did. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, so they diminished because no more converts into Peter's group, how much more their fullness when they're resurrected after the second coming. So Paul said, For I speak to you Gentiles. That's the next sentence after 11.12. That he was magnifying his office. And thou, being a wild olive tree, in 11.17, so that thou, being a wild olive tree, modifies, that pronoun modifies the antecedent Gentiles. So who is grafted in? The Gentiles or the body of Christ? Gentiles. Gentiles. Yes, because the body of Christ cannot lose their salvation, right? They can't be caught off. Through Israel's fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. All people, all the lost, have an opportunity to be saved. Continue in his goodness or you're going to be cut off. <clears throat> okay. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. So, blindness in part because Peter's group was not blind, but the rest were. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, until the rapture. The, the reason why we were saved, so that we could serve him in heaven, here and in heaven. And so all Israel shall be saved, all believing Israel, everyone that believes in Israel shall be saved, as it is written... So here we go with prophecy now, something that was written in prophecy. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So at his second coming, the deliverer, Jesus Christ, will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is because they'll get his spirit. My covenant unto them, the new covenant, when I shall take away their sins. So he'll, he'll take away their sins when they're in their glorified body, not flesh, fallen, sinful flesh bodies. At the second coming, they get their glorified bodies. Okay, so there it is. And then, uh, so that's Romans 11, 25 through 27. So he talks about that he's going to start up, take, you know, working with Israel after our rapture. And he's quoting as it is written, The Redeemer shall come to Zion, my covenant, arise, shine, for thy light is come, darkness shall cover the earth, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Isaiah 59, 20 through 60, verse 3. So, through the fall of Israel, salvation has come to the Gentiles during the dispensation of grace, in mystery. But later on, they're going to, during the tribulation, they'll rise, and then the Gentiles will come to be saved through Israel, in the kingdom. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, all people, that he might have mercy upon all. So in Romans 11.32. So now, any Jew or Gentiles can be saved by God's mercy. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go over here. All right. Okay, here we are. Sorry about turning my back to you. 
Okay, so uh, there is none righteous, no, not one. But when we believe the gospel, then I should have had these already moved like that. Then my sin is placed by God on him, and I receive his righteousness, and I get baptized into the body of Christ, who's now waiting to be raptured. Okay? And it's very important that I don't add anything to what Christ has done. Because it says in Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if I don't say I worked or I contributed, you know, to my salvation, but Jesus Christ did it all, then I'm going to have the righteousness of Christ. I'll receive that. <clears throat> okay. So God's kingdom is made up of two realms because he said so in Ephesians 1.10. Yeah, okay, so here we have um, that we're spirit, soul, and body. And we're, because of Patty, we have to show our spiritual circumcision that we were talking about. And so... <laughs> spiritual circumcision. Oh, spiritual. Paul is very concerned about our spirit and soul. And he talks about our, the circumcision of our body, where, which contains the sinful flesh, in Colossians 1, 11, I mean 2, 11, and 12. In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So once we're placed into Christ and identified with his death, burial, and resurrection, that circumcision takes place. Buried with him in baptism, identification, wherein also ye are risen with him through faith of the operation of God. This is a spiritual operation. Who raised him from the dead. So this is a spiritual circumcision. Not a physical one. Colossians 2.12. 2, 11, and 12. So here we are in Titus. Um, speak sound doctrine is the memory verse. Or, I mean, the summary verse. Okay. Uh, summary sentence, I should say. Okay, so here we are now in Israel's... No, no, not yet. We will be in a minute. Okay, I, I want to get this over here. Okay. All right. So here we are um, on, on earth, and in the second heaven is Satan and his fallen angels, and the third heaven is the Son of God and the Father. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, if we're going to be ambassadors for Christ, teaching Pauline truth, then we're going to be in a, a fight. It's a warfare. Okay? And this is a, a spiritual edification that we can have in our inner man when we study and understand Paul's letters. Okay, so here's Peter's program. So, Christ is going to be the priest-king. David will be serving with him, and the twelve apostles will be over the twelve tribes. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that in that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes. Because Peter asked, you know, what are we going to get? So, the twelve apostles will rule over the twelve tribes. Okay, so it's important to understand about peculiar and how Israel was peculiar. Because God said to Moses, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, the old covenant, then ye shall, you know, the Ten Commandments. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Okay. So it's an if-then principle. If you keep those Ten Commandments perfectly, 
then you can be my peculiar people. How did they do? Not so well. Not so well. What did they do? They made the golden calf, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So are they going to be a kingdom of priests if they do that? Yes. Yeah. They, if they oh, yeah. keep all the Ten Commandments perfectly, oh. they'll be a kingdom of priests. Okay? And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. Moses is going to say that to Israel, the children of Israel. And Moses came down and called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. He told them all this. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. We can do this. We can keep the Ten Commandments. We're, we're in, Lord. We are making this agreement with you. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Exodus 19, 5 through 8. Okay? And so we know that they didn't do well. They, they failed even while Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments. Okay? Now, this is what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So is the body of Christ a holy nation? No. No. Who's the nation? Who's going to get, the, who's going to be in charge of the nation? Israel. 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 The apostles, the 12 apostles, mm -hmm. right? Israel is the holy nation, and the 12 apostles will be over those tribes. A peculiar people. So they're going to be special to God. Because why is Peter's group special? Because they believe that Christ was the Messiah. Jesus of Nazareth. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So this is the good news for Israel. That the ones that believe who the Messiah is. And say, oh, no, I think it's not Antichrist. I, I think it was Jesus of Nazareth that came the first time, according to Daniel's prophetic timetable. Those are the ones that are, will go into the kingdom. So our website is marianmanley.com. Our YouTube channel, Salvation, Rightly Dividing, and the Rapture, Truth Be Told, also carries our videos. So let's go over here. And let's do our chapter. Should we do our chapter? No. I, I want to do something else first. So it's godliness by the doctrine. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, that because when ye received the word of God, ye, uh, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So... Not only do we read the Bible, we believe what it says because that's going to give us godliness. The Word of God, that's the work of God. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 So we're going to be transformed to the image of the Lord when we, you know, believe what he said in his word. Okay. So God gives us his life, and his life wants to live through us as we renew our minds in his word. It's not about us. It's all about him. Okay, so let's talk about... Um, Oh, this is what I forgot to show. I don't know if you remember, I had, um, oh, okay, I have to do it. All right, forgot this part. Oh, dear. All right, see this statue here? Yeah. Oh, this is the right Nebuchadnezzar now. statue, mm -hmm. and um, the feet will restart after our rapture. Oh. This is, represents the Gentile kingdoms until Christ return at his second coming. Okay? That's what that is all about. Where is that in the 
Um, so you see, um, that was in Daniel chapter 2. So you see that? What's that? That's the stone, the smiting stone. That's Jesus at his second coming. when he's going to get rid of the Gentile kingdoms. So it, he will be, you know, the Jewish Messiah. And he's the stone. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So it's not going to be given to other people other than Jews. For as much as thou sawest the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known unto the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Daniel 2, 44 through 45. So it's certain that this stone is going to come down, a stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it's going to in, knock in pieces all of those other kingdoms. Okay? So... Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke 21, 24. Okay, so let's compare our rapture, rapture right there, with um, Matthew 24. But I would not have you ig to be ignorant. This is Paul early on in Thessalonians. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that have died believing, that ye sorrow not even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do we believe that? Is that yes. the gospel? Yes. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Those that fell, you know, died believing in Christ. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go ahead of or pre-event them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Do we meet the Lord in the air or does he come all the way down to the ground? In the air. Meet him in the, in the air. air. Meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Okay? So we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Now let's look at Matthew. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. End of what? The end of the tribulation. Um, you know, and you also endure if you're martyred. Okay? If you don't take the mark of the beast. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. So the gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus Christ... Done. is the Messiah of Israel, oh, Messiah. Yeah. the gospel of the kingdom. We're talking about the gospel of the oh, kingdom on earth. Okay. okay. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. The one that was born in that, you know, he was laid in the manger mm -hmm. in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. um, for a witness unto all nations. So, the gospel of the kingdom, that he is the Messiah, the one that died on the cross, shed his blood so they could have the new covenant. He is the Messiah. Okay? It's going to be preached in all the world unto all nations. All nations are going to hear the truth. And then shall the end come. The end comes with his second coming. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. What's that? Antichrist in the middle of the tribulation. Stand in the holy temple saying, I'm Jesus. You know, I'm Christ. I'm the Christ. You know, 
When he yeah. claims that in the middle, that's the abomination of desolation. Okay? Oh. When he does that, um, whoso readeth, let him understand. So what do the people during the tribulation have to do? Can they just say, I heard this from somebody, or do they have to read the Bible themselves? Read. They have to read, just like we do. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So when Antichrist sets himself up in the middle of the, king, uh, of the trib, that's when you flee, they flee if they're in Judea, to the mountains. Where, where Christ is going to take care of them. So that was um, Matthew 24, 13 through 16. Now here comes later on in Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So is that before or after the yeah, tribulation? After the tribulation. No. Immediately after the yeah. tribulation of those days. Uh -huh. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. So the sun is dark, the moon doesn't give her light, and the stars fall. So there's no light. It's pitch black. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, those powers, remember those powers that were up in the heavenly high places? They're going to be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The tribes are going to be, you know, look upon him whom they pierced. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So he's, they're going to gather together the believers in the tribulation. Okay. Alright. So here is the same scenario in Luke. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed about compass with armies then know that the desolation thereof is nigh so when they see that uh, Jerusalem is surrounded then they know that their uh, the desolation of Jerusalem is nigh it's going to be destroyed then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains okay it's just what he said to Matthew right mm -hmm. So they're going to flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it, Jerusalem, depart. Get out of Jerusalem, right? And let not them that which that are in the countries enter thereinto. So should I as a Jew then go, oh, they're believing, I'll go into Jerusalem. Or stay out. Stay out. Stay out, right. Okay, so that was 20 and 21. Luke 21, 20 and 21. And here's 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the, of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What began with the Babylonian captivity is going to be continuing in prophecy until the times of the Gentiles is you know, fulfilled, when their time is up. Their time is up at the second coming of Christ. Um, Luke 21, 31, and 32. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things, so those people that see the thing, these things that he's talking about, the, you know, surrounded, you know, Jerusalem and the people leaving, the believers leaving, see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. So when that's happening, you know, the kingdom of God on earth, the promised kingdom on earth, with Jesus Christ ruling, is nigh at hand. So he, he's talking to the unbelieving and the, the you know, he's, he's letting know, you know 
what's going to happen to the unbelievers of Israel and the believers in Israel. And, and the unbelieving Jews and Gentiles. And Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So the generation that sees those things shall not pass away. Okay? Here is in Matthew 10, 22 through 23. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, to the end of what? Tribulation. Good. Shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come. Mm -hmm. So that will be taken, um, that's Matthew 10, 22 and 23. That will be for that generation alive after our rapture. Okay, see how easy that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about Basra. Okay. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Okay, so this is the sword of Jesus Christ that's going to be bathed in heaven. How is it bathed in heaven? It's when Michael, the archangel, and his angels fight against Satan and his angels. Okay? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. What's Idumea? It's Edom. Same. Same. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. So, the people that didn't help my people, you're in trouble now. Because we said, bless the, those of Abraham and I will bless you, curse those of Abraham, and I will curse you. Okay? The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. There's, the Lord is not happy with those people who were mean to his people. Okay? And so, judgment day is coming. And now, in, in Isaiah 61, 6, we're going to fast forward. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God, and ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So, the Jews are going to be the priests of the Lord later, and the Gentiles will be helped by them to understand Jesus, and they'll be glorif they'll, they'll, they'll be, the Jews will be happy then, because they have the love of Christ in them. They won't be upset with the Gentiles. They'll be happy that they can share the truth with those Gentiles. So, here is the kingdom of Edom. And there is Basra, like south of the Dead Sea. So here is Isaiah 63, 1 through 4. Okay, why am I even talking about Basra? I want to show you that the second coming of Jesus is not the same as the rapture. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Okay, this is the, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of Israel. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? You know, why is your clothes red? And thy garments like him that treadeth the wine fat. You look like you've been treading, you know, on grapes. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So he's not trampling grapes. He's trampling people. And I will stain all my raiment.
For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So it's a vengeance against those that hate him, and, you know, redemption for those that love him. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a really good verse. I hope I have it. And there it is. Yeah, the there it is. There it is. Oh. I want to read that to you in a little bit. But but let's um <clears throat> let's go over the books. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> the body of Christ is going to live where? In, in heaven. heaven. Eternal in, in the, the heavens. Heaven. Right? Okay, so it's for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 27 and 28. The dispensation of grace has been grafted in. Okay, so we're having just now a 99 cent Kindle sale. And so, here are some books that you might want to get that will help you to understand Mid-Acts Dispensational Bible Study. God's Secret is a overview of the whole Bible, rightly divided, and it's 100 pages. And it comes in color or in black and white. And um, El Secreto de Dios is the same book in Spanish. And then we have God's Secret in hardcover. We have it in um, Norwegian. We have, um, after you've mastered that, it's very important to understand Romans. We have Romans, a concise commentary in black and white or in color. Now when you see on our, um, on our videos the word best in... Um, Parentheses, it means that those videos are um, maybe without commercials. So it's okay, best yeah. to get our playlist. Um, 1 Corinthians, a commentary. 2 Corinthians, a commentary. Galatians, a commentary. Ephesians, a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, a commentary. The certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture is about first and, the commentary on First and Second Thessalonians. So that's very timely because that's all about the rapture. And um, then Paul's pastoral epistles is First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. So what we do is we give the verse and then commentary in a lighter font. The verse is in bold. Okay, then we have a little booklet called How to Be Saved Made Simple and another little booklet of how to become a King James Bible believer in 33 pages. And why was the earth without form, void, and dark? And we have Could God Have a 7,000 Year Plan for Mankind? And that comes in Kindle, we call it AD 34. Then Just As God Said is a book for children, it covers the Bible in 50 pages. Okay. Oopsie. All right. <clears throat> then we have our Rightly Dividing series, which is all of Paul's letters. Rightly Dividing Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians. The old cover was yellow. Study Guide. And these are all also com commentaries, just like the others. Rightly dividing Ephesians study guide, rightly dividing Philippians study guide, but we, we taught through these books twice. So um, these are, you know, a little different. They're all good and they're all, you know, they're different. Rightly dividing Colossians and Philemon, and then rightly dividing First and Second Thessalonians. And we just finished rightly dividing Second First and Second Timothy and Titus study guide. So if you get them for 99 cents on Kindle, you can see if you want to get them in the paperback because the paperback is so much better because you can mark them up and underline and color. So then we have um, Acts of the Apostles, a three-part series. 
Uh, and then we have Mr. Rapture, read this commentary on Hebrews. And then finally, Treasure Hunts, Volume 1, 2, and 3, which is all Paul's letters, the first set of commentaries. So let's go over our chapter. And the prices are low. Very low, because <laughs> sometimes we only make one penny uh, in royalty because we're here to get out the, the message. Okay, so Paul ended First Titus by saying, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. So those people who don't want to be purely Pauline, but mix Peter and Paul, they've been defiled because they've been mixing, you know, prophecy and mystery, the instructions that God has for the two groups. But even their minds and conscience are defiled. They, they've been, you know, mixed up. mixed up. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him because they're not preaching Paul. You know, the mix, mixing Peter and Paul. Being abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. So they're lacking in being able to do a good work. Is that Titus 15? That was Titus chapter 1. And uh, the last two verses. Okay. Because we're just doing that so we can get into Titus chapter 2. But before we go there, I want to look at this. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So this is very similar to a verse we went over last week. But this one is, see how they're waiting for him? They're going to be waiting for him, remember? They're waiting for Christ mm -hmm. uh, to come at his second coming. Trusting him. They're, yeah, they're trusting him to keep his word to come at his second coming. Yeah. Did he promise to come at his second coming? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he's going to keep his promise. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So Paul, under the direction of the Holy Ghost, changes that ver Old Testament verse a little bit uh -huh. because we're not, we're saved. I mean, we love him mm -hmm. because we have Christ in us. Mm -hmm. So we have charity. Charity is the love that Christ has for others. So, you know, we're also having a promise of the rapture. So that's 1 Corinthians 2, 9. So the thing that I have not seen was the mystery during the dispensation of grace um, that God is forming the body of Christ. So let's go. Cool. That was a secret. And oh. it was only revealed to Paul, but it's been, how long has it been revealed now? About 2,000 years. years. Nearly 2,000 years. And people still aren't getting it. Okay? Yeah. So that's why we're here. We're trying to help them. Okay, so Titus 2. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So Titus is going to speak the things that become sound doctrine. He's not going to be like those of the circumcision that is speaking against the truth, that are defiled, that makes Peter and Paul. That the aged men be sober. So the aged men are going to be sober. They're going to think right. They're going to believe the truth. Um, they're not going to be high-minded. Grave. So serious. Temperate. Moderate. Sound in faith. So they're going to be sound in, in the Pauline instructions, Romans to Philemon. In charity, they're going to have that love of Christ in them. In patience. They're going to be patient with people that they're trying to help understand Pauline truth. Mm -hmm. Because Paul was going against a current of everyone thinking, oh, Judaism or Messianic Judaism. You know, that was was going on, and he's saying, no, wait, God has changed the program. He, you know, God is saving a group into heaven now. And it wasn't very easy to tell people that. Like today. Like today. Yeah. 
The aged women likewise. So just like the aged men have to be sound in the faith and, and in charity and be patient and all that, the aged women likewise. They have to know sound doctrine. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Because remember, it's godliness through the doctrine. Not false accusers. Not give, so you're not going to accuse someone falsely or slander them. Not given to much wine. So they're not going to drink to the point of, you know, not being, you know, clear-headed. Mm -hmm. Teachers of good things. So what's a good thing? Sound doctrine is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste keepers at home. So, someone that is a young woman that has children at home, she needs to be home. To, uh, because, uh, you know, she needs to be there to care for the husband and the children. When, she gets, when they get o older and they leave the home, then she can be, you know, a businesswoman. Like, there are many examples of businesswomen in the Bible. Okay? But when, she, when they are little, she needs to stay home. And, and love their ch husbands and children. To be discreet. So they're going to be gracious and discreet in what they say and how they say it. Chaste, you know, uh, be uh, dedicated to your own husband. Keepers at home, stay at home. Good, obedient to their own husbands. You know, let the husband make the final decisions in the home and, uh, you know, make him feel admired that the word of God be not blasphemed. So, the word of God is not going to be blasphemed if the women are behaving right. Um, and, um, you know, they can only do that with Christ in them and understanding the doctrine. Mm -hmm. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded because it's godliness through the doctrine as we believe what God said to us, our instructions. His spirit using his word. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Okay, so Titus is going to be a pattern of good works. And we, we should too. The older men and women should be, you know, role models for the younger. In a um, um, in, uh, pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Keeping the doctrine that Christ delivered through Paul exactly how it was. Um, gravity, seriousness, sincerity, you know, um, so he's going to be grave, he's going to be, you know, not joking or jesting, he's going to be sincere in what he tells the people. Sound speech, he's going to say things that are true, that cannot be condemned. You know, nothing bad can be said against the truth. You know, nothing can be spoken against the truth. That he that is of contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. So someone that doesn't understand what you understand, they'll have nothing evil to say about you because you're, you're saying what God said through Paul. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters. So urge by word servants to be obedient to their own masters. You know, the ones that they serve. That, uh, you know, uh, you know in, in our day and age, it's, it's our employer. We're going to do what the employer asks. And, and just like the servants should do what the master's request is. And not come up with their own way of doing things. And to please them well in all things, not answering again. Don't talk back to them and say, I have a better idea. You know, or are you sure you want me to do that now? You know, yes, I, I, sir, you know, whatever you'd like me to do, or ma'am, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Your demand is, you know, or request is what I'm going to do. Not purloining, not stealing but showing all good fidelity, being faithful and trustworthy, that, the, that they may adorn the doctrine 
of God, our Savior, in all things. So they're going to beautify the doctrine by their godly behavior in all things, in everything that they do. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. When did it appear to all men? Who has the all men ministry? Was it Paul in Acts 9? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. So the grace of God is now teaching us that we're going to be denying ungodliness. We're not going to do things that's ungodly. And we're not going to have worldly lusts. We're not going to lust for the things that the world lusts for. We should live soberly. You know, we should live in all humbleness knowing that God is God and we're not. Righteously. So we're going to do the things that are right. And godly in this present world. So God is purifying us by this doctrine in this present world and we want to obey our master, which is God. And we want to do what he wants. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for that rapture who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So he wants to purify us now and have us live godly now, you know, not to wait until we get our glorified bodies and go to heaven. You know, we're going to be doing that by reading God's word and believing it. Rightly divided. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. He can do that with all authority because it's God's word. And also because Paul has appointed Titus to this role. Let no man despise thee. Okay, so don't give anybody any reason to not despise you. In your behavior, in your word, in what you say, in what you do. We, we want to live above reproach in, in this present world. And so that's what we're going to do. And okay. he's in us. He's in us. Yes, if we walk after the Spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So just these few things and we're, we're done. Jesus Christ has not only completely paid our sin debt, but he has given to us his life, his light, his instructions for us so that we can live in this present world live right in this present world okay mm -hmm. so he said you know in this present world mm -hmm. we're going to live right righteously mm -hmm. so we are no longer in sin but sin is still in us we can say no to it as we walk by faith in god's word to us we sin less so faith is believing what god said so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god uh, Romans 10 17 so we build our faith Satan's policy of evil is to conceal the mystery Christ revealed to us through Paul okay and we, we can stop here um, let let's let me get this and then we'll say our little prayer your father in heaven in Jesus name we come before you and we thank you for your word to us and how really easy it is to see the difference between the second coming and your coming to rapture us and uh, that you are purifying us now through your word uh, being used by your spirit in us so that we can live um, you know righteously godly in this present world in Jesus name Amen thank you everybody don't forget to like share and subscribe we'll see you later Thank you.